Good morning. I'm Nancy Lindholm, President and CEO of the West Ventura County Business Alliance, which is the Chamber of Commerce serving the communities of Camarillo and Oxnard. Welcome to the 2021 State of the Port. We believe it is imperative that we partner with the Port of Juanimi each year on this presentation. We all know the port is a major economic engine in our region, but you're about to find out exactly how impactful the port is on jobs and goods movement at a time of unprecedented de demand. I would like to sincerely thank the port for its strong support of the WVCBA and all the work they put into this annual report. And thank you all for joining us. Now let's get started. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you and the members of the West Ventura County Business Alliance. I want to thank Nancy Lindholm for her leadership and the opportunity to be with you all today and to all the board members for everything that you're doing out in our community around business development and supporting our economy. So with that, I'm here today to give you an overview on the state of the port and how we're doing. I know there's a lot of questions out there. There's been a lot of buzz around uh, supply chain congestion, what's happening in the uh, ports and, and ships being backed up and what does that mean for Christmas? And there's a, there's a lot of conversations happening around what's going on in trade. So I look forward to chatting with you all today. Here at the port, the board of leadership includes President Jason Hodge, Vice President Marianne Rooney, Secretary Commissioner Jess Herrera, Commissioner Selena Zacharias, and Commissioner Jess Ramirez. Um, and I'd like to say that their support and dedication to the success of the port and the committee is unveiling. Um, they give the staff all the support that we need and direction to do uh, our jobs well, and uh, they really get out there and have a drive to make the port the best that it can be for the community. And really going back to 10 years ago when I began this endeavor, we sat down and revisited our mission statement and they had the wisdom to say that our port is about creating economic and social good for our community and being an economic driver to create jobs for the people here in our county through having access to global trade. One of the most important aspects of the port is the companies that do business here. I wanna acknowledge our incredible base of customers that make us the fourth largest employer in the county. They do tremendous work to promote trade, build economic strength, and tap markets here in the United States, in our county, and around the globe. And really, without their investment in our communities, we wouldn't be the port that we are today, and we wouldn't have the economic footprint in global trade that we have today. So I wanted to make sure that I send a nice extension of gratitude to our customers for everything that they do for our port and our local economy. So here are some fun facts that you might not know about the Port of Wanimi. Did you know that we are the largest banana import port on the entire West Coast and the second largest in the entire United States of America? only second to Wilmington, which is a port out of Delaware on the East Coast. We are the sixth largest port on the entire West Coast, and we actually now handle more containers than the Port of Boston. We are the sixth largest automotive port in the entire country, and we are in the top 10% of all the nation's seaport. And often because we sit in the backyard of LA and Long Beach, we get perceived as the small fry, but really when you look at us through a national lens, we really are a big part of trade and what happens in the global economy. 
Welcome back. A port in California is stepping up to try and help with the national supply chain crisis. Some ships that are unable to wait to offload their goods in LA and Long Beach are now sailing up the coast to Port Wanimi. Rachel Kim has this story. The traditional cargoes at the port of Wainimi are bananas, fresh produce, cars and fertilizer. But with the current backlog of ships at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, the port of Wainimi's CEO and director says they've become a relief valve for the congestion at the bigger ports down south. As we took a tour of the operations, Dikas explained why we don't see any congestion at this traditionally 24-7 port. We bring a container in. It gets checked in, it gets put on a chassis, and then it goes out to a distribution facility outside the gate where it gets inspected by customs there. Hence, you don't have bottlenecking here inside the gate and at the gate of the ports. Dikas is glad to hear the governor has ordered other ports to start looking into offsite storage areas or distribution facilities. It's important that we continue to really act as that operating port, that conductor, to make sure that all aspects of the supply chain are in check and have the capability to handle the volume of cargo coming through this operation. So another wrinkle or a piece to this whole puzzle is what's happening with the automotive segment of the business that we handle here at the Port of Wanimi. And it's probably another topic uh, that you might be discussing at your dinner table where you're hearing about the production of the chip and how that's impacting market trends. Uh, this chip goes into our iPhones, this chip goes into our laptops, and of course the demand is extremely high right now given COVID and a much more virtual world that we're all living with or living in. And so this is also a chip that's really important in the manufacturing of automobiles. And so it's really delayed the production of cars. And the other piece to this that's been a little bit stressful for the automotive industry is that they're also manufacturing uh, engine parts in, in areas of the world like Vietnam and Malaysia that have been impacted by COVID outbreaks and they haven't been able to manufacture these parts. And so at the pace needed to keep up with production levels. So again, we're seeing again, another hit to the production of automobiles that has had adverse impacts in terms of manufacturing cars. So what does this mean to the economy is that you're having less vehicles come through ports to get into the marketplace for the consumer. And interestingly enough, the demand is certainly there. People want to buy cars, but we're seeing auto automobiles come through this port where four out of five of them might already be sold. It's almost just in time shipping for vehicles coming through ports that are already sold and going right out into the markets. That said, the other interesting th thing that's happening is all these cars that come through ports, they come on something called a roll on roll off ship. Uh, wheeled cargo. So these container, uh, these Roro ships move all over the world and to help with the ills in the supply chain on the container side of the house, they're actually moving different types of cargo. So we've seen some of our Roro ships come in with containers on them. We've seen some of our Roro ships come in with small tractors on them um, that normally would go in containers and go to different ports, to the larger ports, maybe down south or ports up north. Um, they're just coming in pieces now off row row ships. And you're seeing a lot of high and heavy cargo come in on these vessels that may have been dropped off at the larger ports that are congested and they avoid that congestion. They're bringing those high and heavy pieces here through the port of Wanimi. So that's been another impact. And as we get more into the economic forecasting, I'll touch how this is really affecting our bottom line. But just in terms of the big picture, these are two real driving forces that are affecting the supply chain, that high tick up in e-commerce and consumer demand, coupled with this chip production issue and the lack of engine parts due to shutdowns in manufacturing in other parts of the world. Okay, let's talk a little bit now about the stats and, and what we're seeing here in terms of real numbers and volumes that are coming through the Port of Wanimi. Well, we can say with authority that uh, 2021, fiscal year 21, was our best year in the history of the port. Our container business was up 30%. Our automotive and high and heavy combined were up 7%. And our total volume was up 7.5%.
Our volumes for automotive cargo in January through June 21 were up 38.3%. And that's really the recovery that you're seeing in manufacturing. If you can recall at the onset of COVID, we stopped producing cars altogether. So some of these numbers are really recovery numbers from actually manufacturing coming back on. Of course, that's changing now based on what I told you about the chip, but this is um, what we saw in fiscal year 21. Some other interesting points, our revenues are up 68% over the last decade. Our bond debt is coming way down. Originally at 35 million this fiscal year, it came down to 6 million. And our reserves grew to up to $24 million in fiscal year 21. And to give some perspective on that, when I started in 2012, we had only $4 million in the bank in unrestricted cash. So these are all the good outcomes that we've seen over the course of the last decade and some of the uh, COVID impacts that have had positive um, results for volumes and throughputs through the Port of Wanini. Um, that all said, I don't want to leave the impression that we are a cash cow. Um, on the other side of this equation is the need for rigorous improvements inside the gate facilities. One major investments have been around our environmental infrastructure, as well as in our hard infrastructure to support trade. So uh, the reserves being healthy is certainly a priority, um, but it's also important to our future and investments that we need to make to remain competitive. Just to familiarize you with some of the cargos that come through the Port of Wanimi, uh, we move 5 billion bananas on an annual basis. Um, by tonnage, actually, that's more in volume than the uh, amount of automotive cargo that we bring through the house. But if you flip that into revenue, um, you would see that we make more money off the automotive cargo than the fresh fruit and produce cargo. Uh, merely because it's a higher margin commodity. But those are big pillar businesses for us. Also important is just overall general cargo and uh, fertilizer. And we also are home to offloading of squid. So those are our pillar commodities that you would find here if you took a tour, which we welcomed you to do um, at the Port of Wanimi. So having a very healthy uh, fiscal year 21, now we turn into the continued ex ex exasperation of the supply chain and what that impact has had. Well, here it's been quite significant. We have actually seen our import cargo soar up 135%, and we've seen our export cargo escalate an impressive 219%. So why are we seeing this massive tick up in, in volume? Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're able to manage it because we have control and visibility over that supply chain to some degree. But one thing we're seeing is large ships come out of Asia and then call on ports in South America, Central America, and Mexico, where smaller vessels then call here. So they'll transship out of a port or move cargo off the larger ship and put it on the right size vessel for the port of Wanimi in a port like Balboa in Panama or Manzanino in Mexico or Lazaro Cardenas in Mexico and then bring it up that way. So we're finding Asian cargo coming through the port of Wanimi through these transshipments. Another way is through direct charter of smaller vessels out of Asia coming directly here on smaller vessels. And we're starting to see some of that now, particularly we'll have our first vessel call um, this month and we'll pilot and see how that works. So that's become interesting for us because we're seeing new types of cargoes. Traditionally, we've seen the bananas, as I mentioned, plantains, pineapples, avocados, fruits and vegetables, melons, mangoes, blueberries, but new cargo types are coming. Electronics, furniture, musical instruments, t-shirts, apparel, really unique types of cargoes for the Port of Wanimi. We would normally handle agricultural products, and now we're starting to see this uh, surge of, of new types of commodities, which, yes, could help some stores deliver Christmas and other holiday joy. So why are exports so high? Well, what I mentioned earlier is that because of the 
ocean carriers are making so much money off imports, they're just racing back to Asia to get another import box and they're leaving that export box behind. Exports in our country just can't jump on these ships. And so we're finding that exports are coming all the way from Seattle to the port of Wanimi to get into Latin American markets. We're not servicing necessarily the Asian markets through our port, but certainly the trade lanes heading south. Exports in Oakland are sitting there as well because there's less ships, believe it or not, up there. That's been a whole nother phenomena in this thing. But some of those exporters are bringing their containers to the port of Wanimi and we're able to deliver some of those again into those south uh, southbound markets in Latin America. So we're seeing pears and apples and frozen french fries, even bicycles and toys getting exported on our ships down south. And that volume, therefore, is really escalated to that WAP impressive number of 219% the first quarter. And just to clarify, we do operate on a fiscal year of July 1 through June 30. So also in the face of all of this congestion, as you might expect, the nation's cargo, particularly in containerized freight, is growing rapidly, and it's at a, a pace of 23% growth the first quarter of this fiscal year. And we're outpacing that because of all of these volumes that I just mentioned at 44%. So the throughput through the port of Wanimi is actually outpacing national trends in the face of this uh, supply chain crisis just in the face, uh, in the context of, of percentages, but we're able to do this without being congested and we're committing to our community that that is our goal to not become part of the crisis, but ensure what comes through has the agility and the capability to get into the marketplace. Now that we've really done a deep dive into what's happening in the industry and how the port is responding to that and performing, it's time to dig in a little bit to what we're doing in terms of our future and strategic planning. So of utmost importance has been our approach to our strategic plan. We adopted a plan in uh, 2015, a five-year plan that sunset in 2020. We got a little bit behind in updating it because of COVID, but we're back in full force in updating this plan and we're calling it our 10-year strategic plan. And what we've done is had open and transparent sessions with our community, interviews with our customers. We've done these in multiple languages. We've had them in English, Spanish, and Mixteco to make sure we're really hearing from all members of the community, all of our stakeholders, all of our government partners, all of our businesses here in the county to make sure that we're aligned in terms of our future and developing a strategic plan for the Port of Wanimi. Based on these visioning sessions and input from our leadership, our board, we have five pillars that make up our strategic plan. This includes economic vitality, infrastructure, environment, innovation and technology, and social equity, community, and strategic partners. Let's talk a little bit about the strategic pillar of economic vitality that the port brings to the communities here in Ventura County. The port itself creates over 15,800 jobs. We generate 119 million in local tax revenues and the total economic impact of the port is $1.7 billion. Yes, that's 1.7 billion with a B. When you drill down a little bit and you look at direct jobs, the port supports over 2,500 direct jobs and we look at the tax revenues that the port brings to the various communities here in our county, I'd like to highlight that 16.8 million goes to the city of Oxnard and 2.2 million goes to the city of Camarillo. Okay, let's move on to our infrastructure pillar. The port has invested over the last decade over $77 million in port infrastructure. 34 million of that has come from grant funding, and we are particularly grateful to our congresswomen, our senators, our local supervisors, and city councils for all their support for our grants and helping us modernize our port. 
The Harbor District itself has kicked in $22 million in investments, and the private sector, our stevedore companies in investments in cranes and hybrid electric cranes have brought in $21 million. What type of work are we doing with this funding? Particularly, we deepen the port to 40 feet from 35 feet. Uh, that's game changing for us and that not only does it create more jobs and economic opportunity, it allows ships to call in the port with more cargo on them so that they can offload more here at the port of Wanimi, um, don't have to work with tides and those sorts of things. Um, and it also allows some slightly larger vessels to call, call in the port of Wanimi. We've also been able to use, take the sand from those dredging projects, move them around the corner and do some renourishment projects for our local beaches. Um, we've had to do a lot of modernization here at the port of Wanimi because we're moving to a new type of cargo operation. Traditionally, our fruit and produce came in vessels in the hull of the ship or the belly of the vessel on pallets. And now everything, all our fruit and ag products are coming in and out of the port on containers. So we've really had a shift how we handle this cargo. We've had to create more staging areas. We've had to get cranes. We've had to deepen the port. So there's a lot that goes into this port modernization. Also, we want to make sure we're very strategic in how we set up our infrastructure to support our automotive side of the house. And we've done some work in paving and other types of lighting projects to ensure that our automobile industry is well supported. So long term, in terms of infrastructure projects, we're looking at ways that we can expand both inside and outside the gate. And what we're really doing here is painting our canvas. We've had renderings come in from our consultants, Moffat Nichols, and we are going to share these with our customers, with the communities, so that we can kind of throw the spaghetti on the wall, see what sticks, and understand and develop our strategy for the next 10 years and what types of investments that we're going to make here at the Port of Wanimi. Some ideas that are coming out of this process are building a parking structure so that we can stack cars, looking at gantry cranes to more efficiently move containers, where are properties off port that might be able to support and sustain both the automotive and containerized cargo. We understand we'll never take on the large vessels that you see in the San Pedro ports, but certainly we have the opportunity to grow and bring more business here and create more jobs. Here at the Port of Wanimi, environment and the pillar of environmental advancement is a top priority. It's an imperative. We have made a lot of investments here already to date. We plug in our ships, that was a $14 million investment so that our vessels now do not produce emissions while at birth, our refrigerated cargo vessels. And we're looking to do upgrades so that we can also plug in our automotive vessels. We currently have adopted a resolution to move towards decarbonization of the port and we've received a $200,000 grant from the California Energy Commission to build our blueprint towards decarbonization. We are also working in partnership with the Ventura County Air Quality Control District to develop a clean air plan. It will be the first of its kind in that you'll have a county and port plan for clean air. We've installed air quality monitors over on our local elementary school, the Haycox Elementary School, so that we can really have an idea of what's happening here with air quality, share, those, uh, share the data with the community, and really work together to continue to do sustainable work around the environment, environmental stewardship, and have operations here that not only create jobs, but that are su sustainable and green. And we are proud to still be the reigning champs of the greenest port in the country from the 2017 International Shipping Summit that gave us that designation. We are also Green Marine certified, meaning that a third party auditor comes in and does an audit of our operations and gives us a report card of how we're doing on the environment. And we're pleased to say that we are Green Marine certified. It's somewhat like an Energy Star audit. We have the Green Marine Star audit. I'd also like to commend our customers on their environmental stewardship. Our customers are consistently making improvements to their facilities to green their operations, whether it be with solar power that you see on the rooftop of Mission and other environmental work. Uh, we also would like to highlight that our ocean carriers have really participated in the Blue Skies, Blue Whales program. NYK, Maersk, K-Line, and Globus have all received awards for participating in this water 
group program where they slow down so that they don't pollute as much. When you move your vessel slower, you have less emissions and you also have less whale strikes. So our customers have been very active in this program and doing their part to be environmental stewards. Innovation and Technology, another standout program that we have here at the Port of Winnemi, in partnership with the Economic Development Collaborative, Matter Labs, a local venture capital company, and the Navy, NAVC, we put together a collaborative where we innovate and we incubate new technology to build bridges between our entrepreneurs, the maritime domain, and Navy-based operations. It's a real opportunity for you, your businesses, to come and play here and incubate and develop new tech that can help support our local economy. Let's hear from Bruce and myself on how this all works. We are part of the FathomWorks Network, which is a group of us committed to growing the economy and economic opportunity regionally. Yeah, and we got great partners here. We're a collaborative in partnership with NAV C with uh, EDCVC, with our friends at Matter Labs and, and the Port of Wanimi. I'm Kristen, by the way, I'm the CEO and Port Director, and this is Bruce. Bruce Stensley, President and CEO of the Economic Development Collaborative, fighting with a little noise in the background, but that's the kind of day it is because we've got a lot of collisions going on here today. Yes. And the collisions are tech meeting the end users, and uh, we're hoping that there's some great collisions to really build up some new tech for our maritime domain, our military installation, and hey, let's talk about Antex a little bit. Antex has been fantastic. What, more than 50-some exercises here on land, on the sea, involving private sector partners literally from all over the globe, all over the country, coming here to Ventura County, here to the Port of Wainimi to test their technologies. It's fantastic. This is the greatest way we can showcase Ventura County and all of our assets and grow the economy. And with all these vendors back here, they're really connecting the dots and we're hoping that there's some really great networking going on. So this may be the day that that next big thing just happens here out of our county. And it is incredibly exciting to have the opportunity in the COVID world of all these folks in the building, connecting their technologies, showcasing. I, Alona, I've been approached by at least a dozen different of these uh, vendors and businesses today about ideas they've got. They're over my head, but I know how to connect them to smarter people, so I'm really excited about doing that. And what we see from the port perspective, there's some several challenges and disruptions in our supply chain right now, and efficiency and big data and technology are all part of the solution, and we're hoping that the brains here in the back will help us figure a lot of this stuff out. So really exciting day for the Port of Wanimi, for our economic development teams, our private sector and Navy base here in Ventura County. Uh, and we're just excited to be part of it and have this uh, exciting dialogue happening Absolutely. right here. Future of Ventura County are these physical assets, the port, the Navy installations, and all the intellectual property 
all the creativity and innovation. Thrilled to be here, happy to be part of it. So another fascinating part of this program is that we're able to invite our youth, our students, our STEM, our STEAM kids in to really experience what's happening in tech. Uh, we have the opportunity for kids to test technologies and robotics that they're building in their classrooms. We invite them to events that we have here so they can see the technologists and the end users have conversation and dialogue about how to develop technology. And we have annual events through Lego First, our annual event called MAST, where we invite students to come in and firsthand have an experience and get to test and play with the incubators in the tech world. So a very, very important pillar here at the port is our social equity community and partners. One very important partner that we have here is our local Navy base, Ventura County. We have a joint use agreement with the Navy where when we share infrastructure, berths and docks and real estate on the Navy side, we don't pay rent. We actually pay for the development of infrastructure in our local installations. So to date, the port's contribution to Navy base infrastructure is around $5 million. And then we also have a customer that resides on the Navy base, and they've invested over $60 million in assets and infrastructure in lieu of paying rent. So this has been a tremendous win-win between the private sector, the public sector of the port and the Navy to really keep funding here in our county to support our military operations. Our community is an incredible partner and imperative to our success. We really want to create pipelines for our residents here in our county to have access to good paying jobs at the port that have family sustaining wages with access to health care. We want to see the people that live here, not just as we kind of refer to it, have a ticket to watch the game, but actually have the opportunity to play in the game and really have the benefit of the types of jobs that are affiliated with trade and commerce. And so it's become a top priority for us to develop this part of our strategic plan so that we really create those nexuses and those bridges for our community to have opportunity through the Port of Winnie. I have my son, three years old at that time. Going through a divorce, I was out looking for work, you know, not knowing what I was walking into. but. Uh, I took my chances because I was hungry. I came out here and hoping to make it that night. I was able to take care of my son when he was going through school, help my daughter out. She's a single mom. To me, I see this port as my small family away from my own family. This is the port of Wainimi, and we make cargo move. Part of our community uh, initiatives, one thing that we have done historically is uh, for the last, I, I want to say, nine years now, we had a banana festival where close to 12,000 people would come here to the Port of Winimi and get the opportunity to see firsthand the operations of a working facility, a working port operation, have some fun with good music, banana treats, uh, see our automotive business and those sorts of things. Um, but clearly with COVID that put a, a damper on that opportunity. And so we've kind of switched gears and really looked at what are the community needs that we have today in the face of COVID. And so we have done over 56 now community drives where we have partnered up with uh, clinicas, with food share, among many other stakeholders. and work together to donate um, food and supplies to our community um, and do it in a way that really celebrates that we're part of a community as opposed to making it more of a charity type event, but more of working together to support one another. And I'd like to commend our customer, Delmani, for contributing over one million pounds of produce to these events uh, to provide important nourishment to our community in a time of need. another side of the people who are frontliners and sometimes there are the underappreciated and without their help we wouldn't have a plate on our table. The fact that the port without asking any questions 
said, Miguel, go ahead and help the community. Use our partnerships, use our products, use, uh, you know, uh, whatever we have available, um, and just go out and take care of the community. With that trust, knowing that I was going to affiliate with uh, all these groups, and that our best interest, uh, like I said, is uh, el corazón, no la transacción, right? Um, uh, that in itself is invaluable. My name is Art Bouvet. I am the community support leader for Del Monte Fresh Produce in Port Wyneme, California. We bring in container ships full of produce, bananas and pineapples. We serve the entire West Coast, all through Western Canada, as well as Hawaii and Saipan. Port Wyneme has been a resource for this community for a hundred years at least. I believe the Shumash uh, used to launch off of where we, we currently work and for a number of, of years, Port Wyneme has been uh, amazing for the community as far as the outreach, the job opportunity, and in helping out bring commerce amazing commerce to our county and, and state. The port's uh, in the business of commerce and trade, and so we move a lot of bananas, right? Here we are able, with our partner Damani, um, to bring the bananas right here where people are in need in our local community. We stand by our word when we say that as long as we're here, no one in our community will go hungry, even if it's just using uh, bananas. You know, um, and, and that in itself is, is invaluable. A lot of hard work. It's grown amazing. Now we've got the box truck and then the semi truck uh, that Lou Han has, has provided. So it's been amazing to watch this thing grow from loading 20 boxes in the back of a pickup truck to 960 cases in a 53 footer. So Clinica has been a huge support and I can't forget the Port of Wainimi in partnership with El Monte because when we started it was bananas and pineapples and now we got burritos from Mission and uh, John Hinojosa over there at Ruby's Tequila Bar, uh, Juan San Juan from Glorious, he comes from LA to bring us food. So it's, it's really, really cool to see, you know, everyone pitching in how they can, where they can. Bueno, primero gente, gracias a Dios y gracias a Fury the Front Lines por darnos la oportunidad una vez más de poder estar aquí con ustedes y poder I'm blessed that we have so many good volunteers from throughout our county who came to support what's going on in this community and to support the families and to let the families know we care. It's been incredible to watch the growth and uh, to be able to help the different communities. This is something that I hope that we can sustain, not just because we're in a pandemic, but because there are vital, important Part of our community. They deserve respect and dignity and as much help as we can provide. Señores, buenas tardes a todos. Gracias por todo lo que están haciendo por nosotros como campesinos que trabajamos en el fin. Primeramente, el señor de arriba, el señor del cielo, adiós. Hay que agradecerle que la vida en Dios, o sea, comida en ese momento tiene que ir. Y a todos ustedes, señores, muchas gracias por lo que han hecho por la gente. Nosotros como campesinos, echamos de ganas, como siempre, en el trabajo. Y gracias a Dios, porque tenemos trabajo. Pero viene ganando Dios, que me ha hecho salir. Some of the other work that we've been doing with our community includes having a trade and logistics class here. This is a program that runs for about 12 weeks, and we have students from 11th and 12th grade from our local high schools come and have a two-hour experience once a week with our customers, with our staff, to really get educated on maritime career opportunities and trade-based opportunities, and the excelling students get a paid internship here at the port. And this has been tremendously rewarding. We have seen some of these students go on and study academically in their collegiate pathways, opportunities around international trade, business development, from the experience that they've had here at the port. So it's been really a fun and rewarding program that we have been doing with our local youth. We got to tour the port, see so many cool boats, all of the uh, people working on the port. As coming into college, it's really had me want to consider going into something like business and economics. We've also been pleased to report that we've been able to tick back up our port tours. Um, COVID, again, uh, 
delayed some of the opportunities to bring the community in, to bring our youth in and see the operations of our facility. Um, but we've been able to start having these tours and programs. Traditionally, we do, say, 120 youth-based tours through our local elementary schools on an annual basis. So we're pleased to say that we're opening the doors back up, getting the kids in here to have a really fun field trip that's educational as well. Another part of our community efforts include the sponsorships of our 33 organizations here that are locally based. I'd like to give accolades to the leadership uh, of the port, our board, for having workshops and, and working with our community to make investments in priority programs that really support our community and our youth. In closing, I'd like to take this opportunity to give our gratitude, especially as we have the Thanksgiving holiday coming upon us next week, to our Board of Harbor Commissioners, our local businesses, all of our customers, our Navy, our community, our nonprofit partners, and to my staff for everything they do day in and day out to help make cargo move. And of course, a big shout out to our essential workforce here at the port that has endured COVID and been here every day to get our bananas to the shelves and to get our automobiles to market and all the other goods and commodities through here where they need to go around the county and around the world. Thank you to you all and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. We're the P-O-R-T of Wine and Me, committed to environment, caring.